afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, yeah, as you've already heard a lot today, we at Deutsche Börse provide data and analytics for, um, to support the many different uh, core businesses of our customers. And this session uh, now is a deep dive into the different data sources we are providing, the partnerships we are working with, and most importantly, how we support accessibility and usability of our data. Uh, my name is Garrett Marx. I'm heading the pricing and licensing strategy unit within Market Data and Services. And as Ali Reza already pointed out right in the beginning of this event today, we hear again and again from our customers that uh, one key element of our offering is actually a broad offering and uh, offering via standardized delivery channels and standardized contracts. Um, this is actually what has a big impact on administrative resources on our customer side within the market data, uh, market data management departments out there and also within the uh, business units out there who are um, using our data. And uh, yeah, as already said, we do support this by, with partnerships with many data sources. Um, before we look at the different sources from which we are providing data from, um, let's have a look at it first from a workflow perspective on the user side. So, uh, first of all, data is the main ingredient of the whole value chain of a capital markets participant. And um, it starts with uh, the issuance of financial products, um, the agreement of specific financial deals where data is needed. Buy and sell side companies do need information to make decisions about which trades they do, at which prices they buy and sell data. Uh, also, risk management, compliance, middle office functionality functions do need uh, specific data for all the different calculations they are actually doing. Um, on the pre-trade, on the post-trade, in the post-trade phase, um, it's of course about clearing, settlement of data, and I mean, finally, your holdings have to be put in the, into custody. And for all these different purposes, data is needed. So, um, if a specific uh, yeah, desk at your company. Um, is, is, is need, has demand for any kind of market data, analytics, instrument or reference data, and he might request it um, from his purchasing department or from the market data management, or he might um, try to find it directly. So how can we support um, the information product search? Um, first of all, you will find all the information you need on our website, it was just uh, mentioned again by Victor. Um, you find um, their um, descriptions, you find data catalogs, um, descriptions of content of our products, um, the different sources we provide. We have our price list and product list available, you know, where all the different content can actually be found. Um, if you have found the data you need within our offerings, no? then I mean the next question is of course, how can I get access to the data? How is the technical feed? Uh, how, how, is, how, is the, how does the technical delivery work? And um, we at MDNS, we provide specific normalized feeds, but we also um, work with many authorized vendors. And um, I really want to point out here that we yeah, are working, partnering together with more than 400 vendors that are able to provide our data. And these relationships are of course very valuable for us. And this is uh, also from our understanding, very uh, valuable of course for our customers to have a specific um, delivery channel that is tailored to the need of the customers. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, if you decide to, uh, to receive the data directly from us, uh, we provide it via normalized feeds. Uh, normalized means actually uh, um, a specific format. So uh, different data sources, uh, no need to, uh, to, to implement, to develop 10 different feed handlers. And um, on the real-time side, uh, CEF is our main data feed. Um, Least line feed, uh, also available in, in co-location, um, quite low latency solution, uh, more than 20 different data source sources are available via the CEF data feed um, on the real-time side. And also, as already mentioned, elaborated by, on by Sven, um, we have recently introduced the cloud stream as an alternative, a more simple way to, to get access to data, standardized WebSocket API. And yeah, you do here again and again, standard, standard, standard. <laughs> And um, this is actually, yeah, um, the way we are trying to, to help to make it easier, to make the accessibility, uh, to improve the accessibility of our data set. Um, 
our analytics and historical data, we've al already heard about that before. I mean, we have our A7, uh, A7 platform, but um, our Deutsche Börse data shop is actually the place where you can find all the data sets that we are providing on, um, in terms of historical data and analytics, um, also including subscriptions. Um, so um, now you have the data, but depending on the uh, type of data and the purpose uh, where we want to use the data, we all know that a license is required. We do provide our data via a specific standardized licensing framework, via one contract actually. And this is also where we, where we see one of the benefits. Um, on the real-time side, our licensing contract is a market data dissemination agreement. It covers four different license types, uh, redistribution, display usage, non-display usage, and we have a specific uh, license type for CFD data usage. So this is um, the way how vendors as well as end users can, can license their data. Um, pricing is um, either based or it is either a lump sum fee or it's based on the number of accesses or on the number of devices, which is actually the number of technical accesses. Um, on the um, historical data side, we uh, license uh, subscriptions, so end-of-day deliveries, file services, uh, via the so-called file service license agreement, which is also a standardized agreement and grows in terms of content um, also continuously. Um, what these standardized frameworks um, in addition, um, bring is of course, first of all, standardized reporting requirements, reporting requirements meaning uh, standardized file, standardized uh, billings, one fee model, one invoice. So these are all the advantages here. And we also um, um, give access, so all our licensees get access to MDS Interactive, which is our data license management tool where you can see all the licenses or the, or the data products you have already ordered. You can order new products and um, you can also assess your licensing needs by providing us information as part of the usage declaration so that we can help you to actually get the right licenses that you need and reduce the risk of incompliance, for instance. So um, now let's look at the different data sets. Um, as I said, we had DBAG, we do provide data from more than 30 different exchanges and other sources. What is not well known, I mean, apart from the fact that it was mentioned quite a lot today, is that we do not only provide data, um, our proprietary data, so data from DB uh, Deutsche Börse Group internal trading venues and exchanges, um, but uh, we also um, combine it with uh, data provided by a lot of corporations. And um, due to that, to, due to our partners, we are actually able to cover a quite a broad range of asset class from equities, fixed income, commodities, uh, spot derivatives markets, um, and even most recently also crypto markets, where we al also already heard a lot of today. Uh, in terms, uh, we, we do have the focus on exchange data, definitely. Um, nevertheless, um, index data, ESG data is coming on top. Our well-known index family stocks and stocks are, are part of our offering, but also ex external index providers. Analytics that is developed um, by our um, quantitative, um, quantitative analysts and our data science reference and static data um, is also part of the offering we provide um, where um, I want to point out that we will have uh, after this session also some dedicated session on specific topics in that range, ESG, WSS and all our reference data offerings. So please uh, stay tuned to also listen to that. <laughs> um, this now is an overview of the different corporations um, we are working with, uh, the different data sources we are working with. And as I said, it includes a lot of Deutsche Börse Group entities, but also different partnerships we have in, we have in place. Um, there's, first of all, um, the uh, European spot markets, the, the equity markets in Germany with Xvita and Börse Frankfurt, but it also includes the Malta Stock Exchange, the Bulgarian Stock Exchange, Tradegate Exchange, German Regional Exchanges. We do cover the most important European derivatives market, Eurex, of course, including Eurex Repo. Um, our two uh, highly growing and high demand markets in the commodity and if, if X space, uh, EEX, European Energy Exchange and SPI60T are also part of our offerings. Um, 
And uh, yeah, on top we have quite recently expanded our footprint also in South America with the cooperation of uh, the Mexican, with the cooperation of, with the Mexican stock exchange and the uh, stock exchange of Santiago de Chile. Um, in the Asian markets, uh, within our licensing framework, you get uh, you can license uh, Pakistan Stock Exchange, BSC India, just to name a few. And as I said, um, what's the real difference here? Um, there's no need to have a specific contract with the data sources mentioned here. There are actually two exemptions, but most of it is one under one license framework. So. Uh, yeah, that's the real difference that only one contract is needed and the one licensing model um, is, is, is relevant for us. So, yeah, let me conclude um, with the benefits for our customers. Um, because, I mean, we, we decided to go beyond our proprietary data due to the fact that our customers were, yeah, demanding um, more data from us and due to the fact that we actually wanted to make it easier for our customers to use and get access to the data. Uh, and as said, this is a standard license agreement, the standard contract, the standard fee model that helps to reduce internal administration efforts on the client side, that makes it easier to access the data and easier to manage the different, uh, the different data sources that are in place. Um, so this is actually um, what I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. And yeah, we do have at least some time for questions. So if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, please. Somebody coming with the microphone. Um, <coughs> a short question from me. Could you elaborate a little bit on how the process of onboarding a new partner looks like and what would be the steps in that process? For example, if you're in negotiations with another exchange and want to add them to your product palette? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, um, deciding about new partnerships and corporations is based on demand by our customers or by the customers of the corporation partners. No? So this is really a customer driven approach. And I mean, honestly, we have seen we are talking about more than 30 venues and uh, we are totally aware of the fact that there are some vendors out there that probably provide thousand, thousand sources. So <laughs> the, the demand by our customers and the fit, we are looking at, at partnerships that provide best fit, but in terms of um, value add to our customers. No, that's the, the most important thing. Um, of course, in the back, um, or yeah, in, yeah, in, in the back end, um, there's a lot of work to do. A normalization of technical data feeds, of course, involves bringing together the different, the two different yeah, existing data sources in, into one consolidated feed. Now, this is where our experts come in from the technical side who, who are going to, to normalize that feeds. Um, I mean, other than that, of course, it's, uh, it's, a, um, it's a topic about yeah, br bringing together the interests of the two parties, but um, it's also not, yeah, not very complicated. So in essence, um, it's uh, yeah we decide who we want to work with. Other parties do approach us uh, in terms of partnerships, and then yeah we just go for it. Any other questions? Um, yeah, Gerrit, I've got a um, I've got a question for you. Huh? Um, I'd like to follow up on you, you touched on on on. Um, on a number of issues during the course of your presentation. But what I want to do is try to kind of get a sense of, um, we, we know that the, the data industry is incredibly competitive right now. It's never been more competitive. A lot of firms are offering very similar services. Uh, there's a lot of crossover um, between the types of uh, the kind of the data sets, the feeds, et cetera, that they're offering by side mm -hmm. and sell side firms, right? So my question to you then is, um, Against a backdrop, a backdrop of incredible um, uh, competitiveness in the marketplace, what is it? What do you see as special about um, Deutsche Börse's kind of uh, data offering that you think kind of separates it from some of the other players? If you can kind of summarise what you think makes uh, your organisation kind of uh, better, I suppose, or more competitive, or uh, slightly different more compelling mm. from a, um, an end user's perspective. Mm. Yeah. 
Um, so where we definitely have a unique selling point um, is, so also elaborate on, is the licensing side. No? I think um, there are a lot of uh, data consolidators on the technical side, service providers, where uh, the normalization of feeds is actually taking place. But provision via one license contract, um, where there is no additional paperwork needed with other data sources, and I mean honestly, um, the um, the feeds, the different feed formats, they might differ uh, in a slight way or in a bigger way, but this is something that you can handle. But we are aware of the complexity of licensing. We our our approach is actually to simplify the licensing or to keep it simple, not to make it to not to add complexity in every year not to add new license types every year. We, we keep with it as it is. We, when we change something, we try to differentiate it just based on the customer, on the use cases that also, I mean, small scope uh, data users or small companies, small buy side companies, as well as the top tier investment banks, um, yeah, can, can actually get access to the data. No? This is really something where we're focusing on. No? And um, our offering is still quite, uh, quite focused or quite specific. And of course, we do concentrate. Uh, I mean, we are, we are, our customers are globally, you know, but we have a bigger footprint in exchanges. We have a bigger footprint in um, in the European markets. But we are also planning to expand that. You know? We are we are we are definitely looking into interesting other partnerships. Yeah, and this is what I actually see at the most yeah, differentiating point you know, that bringing something under one um, as simple as possible license contract to work. Um, to, to, to improve the workflow of a market data manager, that's what our purpose actually is, or that's what our goal is. Mm -hmm.